I'm going to turn it over at this point to Jonathan Pyle. Um, so happy to have you guys all here for this discussion of Doc Assemble and Demo. All right, thanks very much, Sart. So my name is Jonathan Pyle. I am an attorney with Philadelphia Legal Assistance. We are an LSC-funded legal services organization. So this webinar is intended to give the community of coders, of document assemblers, an update on three different tools, DocAssemble, Documate, and Community Lawyers App Builder. If you haven't heard of any of these tools before, uh, this will be a good introduction, but this will also be uh, kind of an update on some new features that are available. It's a 90-minute webinar, and it's divided into four different parts, four different speakers. Uh, first, I will give an overview of DocAssemble and some of the new features that it has. And I'll try to quickly turn it over to Quinton from Greater Boston Legal Services to talk about some examples of using DocAssemble at GBLS and how he's created a learning community around coding the law and teaching people to code the law. And there's plenty that you can do without using DocAssemble as a coding tool. If, if you don't want to learn how to code, uh, there are some no-code tools, and which we'll get into in the second half. Uh, Dorna from Documate will talk about the Documate system, uh, which is a very user-friendly no-code thing, uh, built no-code system built on Doc Assemble. And then Scott from Community Lawyer will talk about Community Lawyer's App Builder, uh, which is as easy to use as SurveyMonkey. Um, all right, let me see if I can. Yeah, okay. It's just getting a little noise, so I muted something. Um, all right, so DocAssemble is a free open source system for document assembly and uh, guided interviews. Uh, I developed it in my spare time when I wasn't working as an attorney in legal aid. Uh, I started working on it around 2015, and I've just been working on it since then on the nights and weekends. It is available uh, for... Uh, anybody to download uh, or to create a server, uh, it's on it's on GitHub, and it gets updated pretty frequently. We've got uh, a, the change log showing here, uh, showing that every few days I update a new version, and and so uh, when people point out a problem or a bug, I can often get it fixed pretty uh, quickly. Uh, we get together once a year for DocaCon. Uh, which is a one-day conference. We had it in Brooklyn in June this summer. We had some sponsors, some guy from Europe, uh, from the UK paid for our happy hour. Uh, we had a number of speakers from uh, like a bar association, legal aid, a community lawyer. Uh, some big firms as well uh, participated. Uh, so it's, it brings the uh, legal services world together with other parts of the legal world and uh, tech startups. Uh, and if you missed the conference, you can find videos uh, and uh, PowerPoint slides on the uh, DocaCon.com website. Uh, one of the big things that's, that I've been working on since the last time I uh, presented, which was at the ITC conference, is uh, really improving the API for DocAssemble. So uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything to you if you're not a coder, but it does open up a lot of opportunities for integrating um, DocAssemble with other things. Uh, so, and one of the things I just wanted to show you about how DocAssemble has evolved is our Slack channel. Uh, so you can, anybody can join the DocAssemble Slack group and it has a number of channels in it. The most popular is just questions where people have a question about how to do something or if they're stuck, I can usually respond very quickly. Uh, but just show you some of the channels here. Analogy Project was a uh, project that Jason Morris worked on to integrate analogical uh, reasoning uh, with case law with DocAssemble. So like the cutting edge, like artificial intelligence in the law. Uh, so Jason Morris is a, a Canadian. He's a very creative guy, a uh, real asset to the community. Uh, there's also a channel on integrating with Clio, which is a case management system used in the uh, private sector. Uh, we have a channel called Enterprise, which was created recently for people who are at big firms to talk about how to get DocAssemble to be ready to be deployed in the big firm environment. So that's exciting. Quentin has his crew under the 
Greater Boston Legal Services channel. We've got a channel about talking about integrating with le the legal server case management system. Uh, we, ha we have a discussion on how to structure code. Uh, so sort of big, big idea questions about how do you work with subject matter experts? What, what variable name conventions should you use? Uh, what are the most elegant ways to approach things? Uh, we, uh, Doc Symbol is also being taught in a couple law uh, school classes this semester. So there's a channel on teaching and then there's a channel for student questions. If any of the law students want to ask a question, uh, like a really newbie question. And then like there's a channel on how to do Doc Assemble trainings. Uh, so it's a pretty active community. There are 400 something uh, members of the uh, Slack uh, group. A lot of them just lurk, but but it's uh, pretty active. Uh, so I was going to just dive into a, a an example that illustrates a couple things. So this is the playground. I have a server running at docassemble.org, and I go to the, to the playground, and here's what a uh, guided interview looks like in its source code form. Uh, so it's just a couple of questions uh, that do things. Uh, so let's just run the, I'll sh run the interview to show you what it does. Um, so it says, tell me about yourself, name and social security number. Uh, where do you live? And, and this is an example of a feature that, that I've demonstrated a couple times, but if you haven't seen it, it uses the Google autocomplete. So if you start typing an address, it will show you an address near you, uh, near your location, and it will populate everything accurately. Uh, clients often mistype addresses, and so it's really valuable to use the uh, Google autocomplete feature. Uh, and then uh, say I want to sue for lots of money. Uh, and the, the next page shows a couple things. One is it automatically says you should file your documents in the Court of Common Pleas of Philadelphia County. So it used the address to get the county. Uh, that was uh, made possible by uh, Google's geolocation feature, which was enabled there. And uh, it's also demonstrating how you can produce a document in two different forms. The unredacted version looks like that. Uh, it's just a, it's created from a Word document and it's plugged the information from the interview in here. And this is another cool feature uh, called re uh, the redact function uh, where uh, this is particularly relevant if you're from Pennsylvania because in Pennsylvania now you, when you file any legal document that has a social security number or other personal identifying information, you have to file in two forms, an unredacted and a redacted version. And so this is a, automatic way of very easily generating uh, a redacted and unredacted version. And, and the only thing I had to do uh, to do that was add this um, line redact false to the to the attachments to that question. And so the way this work this looks like in Word, uh, I've got uh, my Office 365 open here. And so here's the uh, underlying Microsoft Word file. Uh, you can see that I've got uh, variables in double squiggle brackets. I've got some if else logic here. If the money claimed is more than 10,000, then say a big one. And here's how the redaction thing works. You just wrap whatever you want to redact in the redact function. Uh, another thing that this uh, demonstrates is uh, the power of using objects as variables. So uh, in the actual um, uh, document, I said my home address is so and so South Street, Philadelphia, PA. So that that is normally a bunch of different fields, but uh, the way that it can be specified in your Word document is just refer to user dot address, and it will figure out uh, that you want to split it into multiple lines. It will use the various parts of the address automatically, and hopefully that saves time uh, while uh, making Word documents. Uh, the currency is nicely formatted using the currency function, adding the the commas and the uh, decimal points. Uh, over here on the, the right hand side is a uh, playground sidebar which is a word add-in uh, that is available both on the web version of Office 365 and on the desktop version. It looks a lot like the sidebar in the playground. Uh, it's, it sort of has the same functionality um, but uh, it helps because you can it has an autocomplete function so if I start typing one of my uh, variables, it will show the 
uh, suggested completion over here and I just click it and it ins inserts the rest of it. Getting your variable names 100% accurate is uh, a really important thing when you're doing any type of coding. The Word file here is stored in Office 365 just in my OneDrive, but I can press that button and it will upload it to uh, my demo.docassemble.org server uh, just by uh, pressing a button. And so that's kind of like the, the standard workflow of a, uh, de a developer of a guided interview is uh, in, in uh, OG docassemble is uh, uh, writing uh, text over here in the YAML uh, f format, which stands for yet another markup language. Uh, and then Python code can be used to determine some of the interview logic. Um, <clears throat> Oh, so one thing that I developed recently at Quinton's suggestion is a feature for uh, creating interviews in multiple languages. So I, Quinton was working on a system where he wanted to have um, his interview that he was making for eviction available in five different languages. And what would be a convenient way of uh, having translators work on the underlying text of a guided interview? So. Uh, I created this system that creates an Excel spreadsheet with all of the phrases uh, that are present in a interview. And you have them here in a um, Excel document that you can hand off to your uh, translators. And so this is a Spanish version. So I'm just going to translate one of the phrases here. Uh, tell me about yourself. And I'll create a Spanish version of that. And I'll uh, save this to um, my desktop and then I will go back to the playground and upload it into the data sources folder and then I will go back to my uh, interview and I will plug in some logic for um, making the translations appear. And so it, it looks something like this. Uh, it's just three different uh, blocks. One is a reference to the Excel file I just uploaded. One is a question asking what language do you speak uh, and setting a field called the user language. And the third is a uh, code block that uh, indicates w um, what the language should be uh, for, for every time the screen loads. And so now when I run the interview, it's going to ask me what language do I speak? And if I say Spanish, uh, then that uh, line from the Excel spreadsheet is now part of the interview. And so you can just iteratively use this process to uh, translate uh, your, uh, the, the phrases in your interview and uh, uh, into different languages. And also there are a number of phrases throughout the system like uh, the stuff here in the, in, the, in the menu. All of that can be translated as well uh, with the help of this feature right here. And that feature actually uses Google Translate to give you uh, a head start on translating it. Uh, so that is the one of the translation features. And I just have a couple more minutes um, to show you a couple other things that are kind of cool. Uh, they're new. Uh, one is this feature for tracking reasoning that your uh, inner that your logic goes through one of the problems with guided interviews is that even if they produce the correct legal result uh, the user doesn't really get an explanation of why that's the correct result they they just it kind of just comes like from an oracle or something um, and it can be kind of tough when there are so many different branches in your logic to to develop some type of automated explanation of the reasoning that uh, a system went through in order to um, produce a result. And so this is just a, there's this function that I added uh, called explain. And let me show you the um, full text of this interview in widescreen format. So I've, I've got some Python code here that shows the logic of the interview. If your favorite fruit is one of apple or orange, then uh, uh, and then you either are eligible or you're not. Um, let me actually run the interview so you can see this ridiculous interview. Like suppose I say that my favorite fruit is apple, but my favorite vegetable is turnip. 
then it will tell me that I'm not allowed to enter the space program. And I'll say, the reasoning was, you said your favorite food was apple. You also said your favorite vegetable is turnip. Because your favorite vegetable is disgusting, you're not eligible for the space program. Uh, and so the way that that is um, created is you just write these little lines with the explanation every time you do something in code. So you have sort of your code and your explanation all in the same place. And at the end of the interview, uh, the user can sort of get a play-by-play -play of the uh, thought process behind uh, the interview, which would other be, otherwise be somewhat difficult to, uh, to create. Um, let's see what else I've got. I've got a, a new system that allows for excessive customization of every aspect of the screen. I don't personally like this stuff myself, but it's very popular. People like to uh, put like disclaimers or stuff below this, the uh, the buttons, uh, something at the top of the screen. They want to customize every little part of the screen. And so there are lots of different things that you can customize uh, to your heart's content. Uh, so this interview um, will sh show different things on every single screen. It's sort of uh, text that... Uh, comes up. Uh, I think I'll do one more thing. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention was I. Uh, there's a lot of discussion around, like, how do you staff a guided interview project? And I've got, I have a long missive that I've created in the development section of the documentation where I opine on how you create high quality interviews. So if you're thinking about staffing a project, you can read that. All right, one last thing. Uh, a lot of people like to gather groups of things. So, and they, they, there are different ways to do that. So uh, let's say I want to add information about fruit and seeds. Uh, and then you can have a table and you can reorder uh, the items in a table by clicking uh, these um, mobile friendly buttons and you can, you can edit uh, the things that you added after they uh, were um, created. And there is also a feature now uh, for collecting all the items on one screen because a lot of people like to do this. They, they don't like to have the screen switch over. So you can, you can do add another. And so gather a list of things all on one screen. Um, but that, that is all I'm I was going to demonstrate. Now I will want to turn it over to uh, Quentin. So let me see if I can change the presenter here. Hello, everybody. Let's see if I can turn on my webcam. They were able to see me as well. Everything's so, looking good. Uh, great. And looks like I'm not showing my screen. Or does everybody see my screen? Uh, we see your screen, but we see the slides in edit mode instead of presentation mode. OK. All right. So I just want to talk with you today a little bit about something I, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit grandiose, but uh, calling the Massachusetts model. So I'm hoping that all of you can take back to your legal aid organizations as well, so you can build your own .assemble learning community. Uh, today, I'm wearing the hat of being a consultant. So I've worked at Greater Boston Legal Services for the last 11 years, for the last nine months or so. There's been enough demand for people who are looking to do doc assemble development that want a little extra hand that I've been offering that on the side as well. So we do a number of different kinds of work. I have a small team of people that work with me now. And we're doing things, everything from building these user-friendly legal applications, kind of wizards or guided interviews, to doing API integrations to kind of add extra glue to your interview so it can do more useful things and work with the other applications you already have hosting and setup, and purely internal facing document automation as well. I have been, for the last couple of years, ever since I've discovered DocAssemble, one of its uh, bigger evangelists. So maybe a question that you have, you're tuned into this webinar, is why DocAssemble? What's so great about it? I think one answer definitely is that it has a ton of different features. and um, I guess Jonathan actually just went over a couple of them. But for example, there, you can do things like send SMS text messages, emails, interacting with someone over time, not just when they're sitting down in front of the computer. It's one of the really uh, 
great features that it has. It's pretty easy to learn. So yesterday I just taught a, a class at Suffolk Law School, for example, in a half hour. I think all of the key things they need in order to build really useful guided interviews, basic logic, writing and displaying information on the screen, and asking for information and assembling documents. And an interview that did all of those things fit in about 20 lines. But I think that the biggest thing about DocAssemble that makes it attractive over the other platforms is that it can grow with you completely. There are lots of easy to use platforms. The truth is um, you can learn any of them faster, probably. Um, there's some that are more complicated. There's some that are de definitely that are easier to learn at the very beginning than DocAssemble. But the actual core feature that I mentioned, like I said, you can learn those in about a half an hour. And then after that, when you want to go on to the next step, when you want to build something that's a little bit more um, featureful, you don't have to learn a whole new platform with DocAssemble. DocAssemble can grow with you and expand to the limit of your abilities. Uh, the limit of what's possible in a website essentially is possible with the DocAssemble platform. So you don't run into these artificial limits that will stop you from being able to advance your work and to do something that's a little bit more complex. And that's, I think, one of the, the most exciting things about DocAssemble to me. DocAssemble really is that one tool to rule them all, in, in my opinion. Yeah, you can do, using the same platform, you can build a really simple interview that generates a client letter. Or you can do mach machine learning and use the eSignature API and uh, do something that's really advanced. And another great thing about DocAssemble is that it can be kind of this glue that lets you make all of your other productivity tools in your office work better and work together and to share information with each other. And that's something that uh, I do a lot of at, at Greater Boston Legal Services. I just want to point out that we do not have the adverse side effects of the ring of power if you use DocAssemble. <laughs> you don't have to make any trips to any uh, giant volcanoes if you use DocAssemble. Exactly. So what I'm calling the Massachusetts model is is this. So it's it's more decentralized than other platforms that you might want to use, but it has the advantage of being on the web, so anybody can access your interviews still. So in Massachusetts, we have uh, we actually have two different central servers and development servers, but we're freely collaborating between four different legal aid projects right now that are using those servers in order to host their projects. So we have that burden of, of hosting is shared, but at the same time, we're really able each to customize what we, we want to have accessible in that uh, platform. I've been hosting for the last year these meetings, um, not quite every week, so but I think probably two or three times a month where we've been doing a number of different things. One has been uh, mentoring people with their questions as they come up. But some people really prefer that type of uh, feedback in person or over Zoom meetings, where they can ask the, those questions and get an answer right away from someone who can help them. Some um, more lecture style sessions where I'm sharing a new technique or other people who've, who've learned how to use DocAssemble in my uh, program or around the state have are sharing something that they've learned. I, you know, pr promoted this idea and there were some people in my office who were a little skeptical, but it's turned out that actually a number of regular staff from my program, who I had no idea until I opened up the call to everybody in the program, have been really excited to learn and participate in DocAssemble and, and participate in these, these mentoring meetings and to build their own projects. And some people have created some really advanced uh, tools using the knowledge that they've gained that way. And what I also have found is that not everybody was ready to learn or the, spend the time to devote to building something useful completely on their own. So I've built a couple of tools that lower the barrier to entry. So these are ones where people only have to know like 10 or so different fields. They don't have to create the interview from scratch but they can make as many templates as they want that still benefit from a really focused task that I created that can be automated with DocAssemble. 
here's what I think it would take for you to start a model like this in your own state. And by the way, you're also free to join in to our um, semi-weekly meetings. If you join the GBLS channel on DocAssemble Slack, that's a quick way to know in advance when we're having those meetings. But if you wanted to start something like this in your own state and you needed your own server in your state, this is about what it would take. For nonprofits, you can get relatively inexpensive or, sorry, let me just jump back to the slide here. Oops. Okay. Uh, you can get Amazon credits or Microsoft Azure credits for pretty inexpensive. Azure has a really good um, has a completely free offering, but on the other hand, the cost per month is higher once you run out of those free credits. Amazon, you pay upfront. You can get, for $175, you can get credits through um, TechSoup. And that would easily cover your use for the whole year. So that's kind of this $175 a year. Um, my organization, Lemma Legal, is happy to help you with initial setup. And then what you're going to want to do is you, you set up the server and you have your monthly hosting in place. You're going to want to set up a couple of APIs to make it really useful. So Google Maps, for example, Twilio for sending text messages, and Mailgun for sending emails. And that's kind of what you really need. And then there's a number of free learning resources that I recommend that you take advantage of as well. I was just realizing when I started to set up this presentation, I didn't have all of those collected in one place. So I started working on a place for, uh, for you to look at those resources yourself. Not done yet, but if you check back over the next few days, there'll be one central place that you could consider going to, to kind of see how do I actually get started developing a DocAssemble. And I think probably it's good for every state to have something like this. But that's really all it takes to get going. One server will be able to host uh, probably dozens of interviews, maybe even like 100 or so with real, no real burden at typical usage rates. Here are some of the learning resources that are available that I'm going to be compiling in one place. There's definitely the first place to start is the official documentation. But there can be a lot there to look at. So I think that my goal is to provide some easier entry points for you when you're trying to figure out, well, what do I actually need to know right now to get started developing? We've been recording our um, semi-weekly meetings, and those are available as videos on YouTube. The number of blog posts that cover different topics, and there are a number of different tutorials that are available. So you can use this link here to go to that website or use the QR code as well. And maybe I should dump that on the ch uh, chat. I'll do that after um, I get out of this presentation and onto the demos. I do invite anybody to have, qu have questions to raise your hand at any point. Um, I know that is a little harder to do on a um, webinar like this sometimes, but if you feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. So what I want to do is show you three different tools. One's so going to be a complex end of the spectrum. Questions here before you yeah. jump into demos. Um, the, some of these are a little bit on the um, technical side. Uh, one of them is uh, somebody's interested in exploring the use of DocAssemble um, for online intake. Um, um, with regards to interacting um, with a case management system. So really, is, is the infrastructure there to kind of pass variables back and forth from DocAssemble into or out of the case management system? It's kind of the first part of the question, and then there's a second question related to this. Yes, the answer is you definitely can. And I've done some integrations with uh, Legal Server, fairly extensive. There's also um, some integrations that already exist for Clio, which is a popular case management system for solos and small firms. And the, uh, there's also integrations that have built for Google Sheets. So if you don't have a real case management system and you just want to have a place to store data, and it happens to be a database or Airtable or Google Sheets, those are both ones we've integrated. Uh, 
So that's kind of what I was talking about when I mentioned the glue, is that it's really um, very possible to build those integrations with pretty much any system that you have. And there's a second part to the question. Um, so the second part is, does DocAssemble have any ability to do something um, like a curl request to an external URL? Uh, it does. You probably wouldn't use curl, but yes, you can make an API request to it. It's very easy to use built-in Python code. Um, like there's a, a library called request, which makes it really easy to integrate with basically any API. And that's basically what you'd be doing with curl, I think, is, is probably what the question is getting at. Um, yeah, a so lot of people do that. And even if it takes a really long time for that other site to respond, you could put the API request into a background task and then do it while the user is answering other questions. So yeah, that is definitely very, very possible. All right. Um, so this, this one is, um, I think I understand the, the question here. Um, is there a way to add a page to a PDF template depending on whether a field has a value or not? For example, if somebody uploads um, a photo of their photo ID, um, you'd like to be able to add a unique page to their PDF file with the photo ID as part of the printout. Yes, that is possible. You can combine PDFs, split PDFs, um, make a lot of different changes to those files. Those are really well supported. Actually, I'll show you this demo will answer, actually both of the demos, kind of the categories of demos, will kind of cover some of the questions. So um, one, one more quick one on the PDF side. Yeah. The redaction feature that is in there, that works with the PDF outcome and not just the, the Word docs, correct? It works with all the document assembly formats, including Word Excellent. and, and, PD, and uh, PDF to PDF uh, templating. Great. Um, back to the demo here. Okay. So I'm going to try to speed through this because I think I have about five minutes. So this is a longer one. This kind of shows you the full spectrum of what you can do with DocAssemble in a kind of a user interaction context where you're answering questions back and forth. I won't show you all the features, but I think one kind of cool thing to show off is this text-to-speech feature, which works in multiple languages. Language. Um, Jonathan mentioned the translation feature. So we actually have six different languages for this particular tool, which is an eviction defense tool. And the text-to-speech works in, across those as well. There's lots of great ways that you can integrate help for the user. So one is these pop-ups, which can actually include images. This is great when you're trying to show somebody a, um, a picture of a document they're looking for. And there's also this help feature here that can be used in context. So this interview covers about 10,000 words. It was like a big project to translate. So it was really great working with Jonathan along the way to make sure that all the features that we needed were there in order to make the translation uh, really successful. And I'm going to just kind of show you a little bit how it works. You can see like some of the things you can embed in an interview in DocAssemble. I won't linger on any of the screens so I can get to the other demos as well. One thing that you can do is embed videos like this have those context specific places. Obviously you can have branching logic. So here I just chose a, a response that doesn't fit this interview. So I'm being diverted away. I'm going to go back and choose one that lets me continue. And I'm going to kind of skip ahead. So this was a, a really long interview. Like I said, it's 10,000 words, covers about 300 different questions. I'm going to kind of let you see some of the key features. One thing you can do is have images that are embedded that let people find information that they need. And the address autocompletion feature was also actually built um, at our request for this, this interview originally. Like a lot of things that kind of grew up along the way. Um, that's really an amazing thing that Jonathan's done to be able to, to share. Um, all that. So here, this is a place where the user can put in their information so they get reminders about court dates. They'll get sent a text message and an email. So I'm just going to 
So now if you can see here, like you can be really responsive to the user. So even though I miscapitalize it here, you can be respond to the fact that it's a housing authority. It knows that the tenants in public housing. Just looking at the name, nothing too complex. The court here is chosen. There's a long list of potential courts, but we know their address. So um, built a way to automatically select the court based on the address of the person where they live. And we have these nifty little date selectors, which I think we haven't shown before. And Quentin, you also open sourced that court uh, list, right? So that so other yes. people can just uh, plug and play that in their own interviews if they're in Massachusetts. Exactly. Yeah. The open source culture is another really great thing about DocAssemble. So lots of ability to reuse things. And I want to show, let you see like what the um, ending screen looks like, so you can see what the documents it generates are could could appear to be. And, um, but I'm going to try to not spend too much time on the individual details here. This is the completely stock look of DocAssemble. It's very, very customizable. Jonathan showed you like adding different screen parts, but you can also do things like change all of the colors, um, you know, visual look of the interface elements. Those are all customizable. One uh, platform I think that's done a pretty nice job is the Judicial Council of California in their particular customization. So. All right, so what we're able to do with a tool like this is really like, I mean, it's a long interview still, but you can do your best to avoid fatigue by breaking it up in different ways with visuals and videos and um, prompts and reminders that let people know how much progress they've made. And it makes it so they can really solve problems on their own. It's a, a modern look that people are familiar with and that are, are able to use on their own. We right now have 100 people a month. Okay, sorry. Oh, it's my son today. So this, is, for example, is just letting people see um, the results of the information that they've already provided. And we should be at the end in just a minute now. I don't want to spend too much time on, on this other than to let you see the output and how big an interview you can really create. That can be pretty um, manageable too. Some of the features from a programmer's side are, are really nice in DocAssemble compared to some of the, the drag and drop interfaces, which can be a little bit harder to maintain sometimes. So the fact that you can use object-oriented techniques, you can organize your code into module files, those are things you don't really need to, to know or experiment with when you're doing a smaller interview. And when you do a longer one, they can really speed up the development time. That was one of the things that really attracted me to DocAssemble as well. Okay, so now we are towards the end. Okay, so this is kind of a neat feature that let us use this with this project to save a lot of time for our users um, is the fact that we're filling out two forms, an answer form and a request for discovery. But of course, the discovery request is 100% dependent on the claims. So this is done automatically, the selection of discovery. This is kind of a neat thing too. We wanted to let people sign the forms so they had a packet that was ready to go and print out. And uh, they can either have it be texted to their smartphone, they can use this QR code to get the screen on their smartphone, or they can sign on the computer, which is what I'll do here. Or they can print it, of course.
This is a really also, basic one of the, There's a new feature that integrates with DocuSign, if anybody's interested in that. Yeah, if you want something more robust, um, my company actually built that, and it's um, Radiant Law sponsored it, and it's going to be open source for anybody to use. I'm hoping I can show you the other two things, even though we're like maybe like a minute or two over. So this is should be the last screen, and I have one more prompt here. Yeah. Okay. So this is what the results look like. Someone asked about minipping PDFs. So here, all these forms were actually originally Microsoft Word files but they've been converted to a single PDF, which makes it really easy to print the assembled forms. And that's one of the things that you can do with DocAssemble. So we made a customized cover page here, which is uh, personalized to the person who did the interview. All of their forms are signed in the appropriate place. And they have a really nicely formatted document that you have complete control over. All right. Now, I wanted to show you, if we can, just a couple of other things which let you see how to integrate with a case management system. So there's these tools. I, I kind of alluded to these generic interviews that are easy for our staff to um, customize their templates. This is a signature tool. You probably have the same exact problem. You need to get a release from your client, and um, it's hard for them to get to your office in the time that you need the release. You can't move on to the next step of the case. So this is a really basic integration with Legal Server that pulls all of the fields from the case and then sends them to DocAssemble. This is our demo site here on Legal Server. This is all open source, by the way. I'm trying to remember which of these is going to be the best, but I'll just start with this one here. So this did not require any cooperation with Legal Server. <laughs> if anyone is um, wondering about like how how you get this done, this actually completely works in the web browser, and it just depends on you having um, a special. customization, a new block that you've added to the profile. We got this list of interviews which uses the DocAssemble API to ask for, hey, what interviews do you have available that I can use? And then when you click one of these links, it'll send all the information that DocAssemble has, excuse me, that legal server has for that case. It'll send it over to your interview. It's a really simple integration. Oh, actually, I clicked on a different one than I meant to. but. This is going to be improved and, and integrated even more than it is right now, but what we have is this list of forms is pulled live from SharePoint. And if I actually can edit it right in the web browser if I want to edit any of these documents here. I can select as many as I want. That list could be customized to what type of case it is. And I get them all generated at once. So if I happen to have any questions that are unanswered, like here, for example, it needs a signature for one of these letters. And if I have any uh, customized questions, those will be popped up. But the, the forms that I needed are available right there for me to see with the information filled in from Legal Server. Using the letterhead. These are two other test files I won't show you. And if I click this link instead, this integration lets me send a document to my client to get signed. Again, the list of templates is pulled from SharePoint. I can also upload a new template. This is used for people who might have something like a, um, a, an agreement that needs to get signed that day in order to get filed with the court on time. I'm going to use an existing letter instead. So let's do this authorization to release records. That's a really popular one.
I can review the information that's there. I'm actually not going to email it, but if I clicked one of those options, this is the way that our clients normally get it. They get a, a link sent to them when they're ready to get it signed. So I'm going to actually visit the link directly as if it had been emailed to me. I can see preview the document I, I'm being asked to sign. If I'm ready to sign it, I click yes. And then I get an error. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should have tested this. I've been making revisions as I was working here. Let's see. Probably not necessary to actually show you the signature because you've seen how that works. But the idea is um, after that, this is the development server that I'm working on here. So sometimes things are broken. Um, but after that, the file that's actually signed gets sent directly to the case. Here you can see some past sessions that I've been testing. So you can keep everything together in one place. All right, so now I think I'd, I'd really better stop now. And yes, i got to turn it over to Dorna for the next okay. part. Uh, but thank you. That's a uh, that doc uh, the doc assemble uh, legal server stuff is very impressive. Nice. Thanks. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. I'm gonna assume that's okay. Thank you so much, Quentin, for and and Jonathan for giving such a such a great explanation of everything that happens in doc assemble. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what Document is what we do, and how we can help you build out DocAssemble interviews. So um, we, we're Document. We kind of started out a little bit differently. We used to be called Help Self Legal, if you've heard of us. Um, we were initially creating guide and interview workflows for a variety of different areas, starting with domestic violence in California, and then realized that we were spending a lot of time on development, um, found out about DocAssemble, and kind of decided to build uh, no-code solution to building DocAssemble interviews. So um, we have since done that, and we're working with tons of legal aid organizations um, and also law firms. If you're a legal aid organization and you're pro pro providing these tools for free to the public, then um, or or you're using them internally, we um, have we give you an account for free. So feel free to reach out for us to set you up with that. Uh, what is Document? So. We allow you to provision and set up your own DocAssemble instance on a, and let me make this actually a, I think I'm in edit mode. So, all right, we allow you to, we basically, when you sign up for Doc, Document, we set up your own DocAssemble instance on a dedicated AWS server and, and database. So what that means is what everything that kind of Quentin was explaining in terms of setting up your, your DocAssemble server, we can do that all for you. And what we do on top of that is we have a no-code interface to create DocAssemble interviews. At the same time, though, we think that the no-code interface can't necessarily do everything that you're thinking about doing. Um, you may be able to create a beautiful guided workflow with lots of complex logic, with through the document interface, but you may still want to do more for further integrations like, you know, go into set up a DocuSign integration or set up some kind of interesting text messaging service um, or a variety of other things. And you can still do that on document by accessing and modifying the code that we can provide you with below your document no code interface. So what that means is you can, whether you're a beginner lawyer with no coding experience and you just want a pretty interface to build interviews on, or whether you want, you're a more advanced coder or have an IT team that wants to take that interview and, and turn it into something more complex, you can do that all on, on our platform. Um, and as I said, we're free for nonprofits. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a demo in a second, but I first just want to go over what, what the interface looks like from a bird's eye view. So the first step in the Doc, DocuMate um, platform is 
you build your interview. So there's two tabs to the document interface. One is the interview tab and one is the output documents tab. So with the interview tab, you're going to be creating all those questions. Like in the example that Quentin just showed us, where you have all the questions that are asked of the user, you set those all up in our system, kind of like you would you know, on Typeform or SurveyMonkey if you've ever used either of those. Then the next step is um, you set up and load your, your documents, which can be Word documents, any other kind of DocX document that you get from Google, or it can be PDF documents. And I'm going to show you how you set those up in a second in the demo. And then finally, uh, and I'm not going to show this part, I don't think, because we've already gotten a really good explanation from both Jonathan and Quentin on actually running the interview and what a DocAssemble interview looks like. So the last piece is you run that interview and you can either use it internally or send it out to your clients or embed it on your website for your clients to use them. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit about how that interface is set up. Um, it, let's say if you wanted to use it from both the no code and the code interface. So for example, here I have um, this uh, one basic question type. So I've created a question that's called client name, and this is in the document interface and the graphical user interface. And oops, um, and then I create I called it client name. I made it a text question as opposed to a multiple choice question or another type of question. And then I've also given it a variable name, which is client name. You can, as you can do in, in DocAssemble, you can create any variable name you want. But then I want to show you how that actually shows up in DocAssemble. So you would do that in the top of the interface in Document, but it shows up at the bottom inside of the, the code. And if you wanted access to this code, we could give you access to this code so you can edit it and, uh, for example, we don't have that re redaction feature that Jonathan just showed as part of our no code interface. But if you wanted to add something like that, you could just, you could ask us, you know, you could say you want access to the code for, for all of your interview sets and you would be able to see all of this below all your interviews and add the redaction feature to your code um, easily without, without um, you know, having to build out your own server or anything like that. So that is kind of a basic background of what our platform does. And I wanted to now jump into a demo of how, uh, how you can build that on Document. So when you lo log into your Document instance, um, this is set up on your own server. So that means that um, here you can have it personalized to your own domain. You could also put your own logo at the top for, um, and have everyone from your particular organization access access these interviews. So this is the document dashboard. Um, here I have three different interviews here. You might have many more. And I'm going to click into this demo interview, which will show you uh, how you can actually set up all of your workflows. Um, so this is the creator screen. It's made up of two tabs, as I showed you a little bit earlier. One is that interview tab right here, where, and I'm not sure if this is big enough, so maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger for you guys. So one is this interview tab right here, where you're creating all your questions. And the other is this output documents tab, where you're loading all of your templates, whether they're PDFs, Word documents, or whatever they may be. So go to the, going to the interview piece, you can add questions, just like you would. We modeled up this after SurveyMonkey and Typeform. You can go to the bottom, click Add Question, and add any of these different types of questions that we have below here. And then once, it's, once you click onto the question type, you can actually type in whatever question you want that to be. Then you give it a variable, just like you need to in, in DocAssemble. And you'll have, you can give it, for example, I have three options here, the multiple choice question, what's your marital status, the options are married, single, and divorced. We can now set, the, the thing, what you, what you do with the, with the variable name is you can do a few different things. You can set question logic, page logic, meaning which pages are actually shown. You can set document logic, meaning which documents are shown at the very end. And then most importantly, you know, you can tell your document how you want this information to populate in, in the end document. Um, so starting with question logic, we have this question here. It is, what is your marital status? Variable name is marital status. Then we have question 10. 
which is what is your spouse's name? Now, we obviously only want to ask what is your spouse's name if the person is not single and not divorced. So what we'll do is we'll go to this logic tab right here. We'll toggle over to the logic tab. And we can set that logic to this question right on the screen. So we can say show if marital status, you can choose from all your variables, is married. And I don't have the, the, the code interface in this piece right now because I haven't enabled that yet on, on this particular account. But um, if you had that code enabled, you'd be able to scroll down and see this in live time populate into the YAML that, that, that Jonathan was showing um, in DocAssemble at, uh, at the very beginning. So that's how you would set up question logic. Then I also break up my interview, kind of like you saw in Quentin's interview. We break it up into multiple different pages. So I have the second page, and I have these same branching logic arrows on, on the page. So I can also click this set logic here to the specific page. You know, say show if, hide if, um, choose the variable, and choose the value. And then that, that page would be, would be hidden or shown. Another thing that I want to show you guys, uh, which a lot of people like to use, is, is a separate type of question. It's, called, it's, a, it's a looping question. We call it a repeating item. And this allows you to ask information about an item that there may be zero of or that there may be a hundred of or more. So children would be one example of that. So first you put in the item name, which in this case I put children. It could be anything else like assets, bank accounts, you know, anything else that you're gathering lists of information about. Uh, and this is what, what, what uh, Jonathan and Quentin were, were talking about in terms of object-oriented programming. So if you are uh, comfortable with that, you would always be able to, to change that in the code and do additional things uh, that weren't necessarily in the interface. So um, what you'll do is you'll set up your, your repeating item with an initial question, which would be, do you have any of the item? And then a continuation question, which is, do you have any other of that item? So in this, in this example, I've used children. So in the same way that I would ask someone if I were sitting across, a, across from a client um, in, a, in a live setting, I might say, do you have any children? If they say no, then I would continue on with my interview, with my interview of the client. If they say yes, though, then I would ask them a variety of different questions about the attributes of those questions. And so here, um, I've given some examples of that, but this is all, you can customize it to how you want. And then once they give me the information for their first child, then I would say, okay, do you have any other children? And I would continue to ask that in a looping fashion to, uh, until we you know, have asked about all of the different children. So that is the repeating item question. Um, and then similarly to, to what you've seen before, you can also set up um, signature pages um, as well. So I've now set up my interview, and that's all set up. So now what I want to do is load my output documents. So I'll go over to this tab for the output documents. And here in this interview, I've loaded two different documents. One's a docx, a Word document, and one's a PDF document. Um, and you can, you can set those both up. I'll show you first how you set up um, your PDF document. So what you'll do is you'll load it to our system. You can click on that PDF, and automatically our system will pick up all the names of those fields that are inside of your document. Um, even if they have underlying funky names, we will we'll kind of edit them so that they match um, exactly what they say right next to them. And so what, what, what you can do then is you can start tagging them to different questions inside of your interview. So in this, in this interview, for example, I didn't have anything that was tagged to state bar number, so that's going to remain untagged. But uh, if I wanted to tag a question to a different interview, to a different variable, I would say tag to question and then choose from my different variables. You can also set um, checkboxes here and, and additional, um, additional logic there. Uh, so I'll minimize that. And then the next thing I wanted to show you guys is how you set up your, your Word document. So uh, DocAssemble has a really great uh, Word add-in. But we've also built out a, a, a new one um, that allows you to do a little bit more uh, complex logic for those of you who are less familiar with code. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to toggle over right here to my Word document here, which I've already set up with a few things. And I'll make this bigger for you guys as well. So 
we I have and and this word add-in it's it works within all versions of Word. So I'm on Word online right now, but you could use it on Word for Mac or Word for PC. And what it allows you to do is you it APIs into your um, interviews. So here you can see I had three interviews in my in my dashboard, and they're all listed here. So I'll choose my demo offer letter interview, and then I can set up all of the different conditions and variables that I have in the side panel. So for example, I have um, simple variables here, and right now you can still see the syntax. We're actually going to be taking this out so you don't have to look at it all the time. You can hide it, but for now you don't actually have to put any of the syntax in. Our system does it for you. So for example, let's say, let's start with simple variables. Let's say I just wanted to put in a simple variable and I wanted to put the person's, I don't know, the, let's say the street address. Um, I could click, and that's already a variable in my interview. I could click insert. And that will just put basic, uh, this is called, I think it's Jinja2 formatting. So it puts in the basic Jinja2 formatting for the basic variable. So that's pretty simple. Um, Jonathan showed you a little bit of that before. Um, and then we can also do more complex things. So let's say you wanted to do a conditional phrase or a conditional paragraph. I could do that. So I'll start with showing you how you can do a conditional paragraph. So let's say I wanted a phrase here that says, I am married to show up if the um, marital status was married. What I would do is I would highlight this phrase or this paragraph, and then I would go to add conditional paragraph. So I open this up, and then I go to show paragraph when, and then I can choose the specific uh, variable that I want to base it on. So I'll say show paragraph when marital status is married and then I'll insert this syntax here. And what that does is it actually populates the Jinja2 syntax for me right here. And so I don't have to touch that, but that's now in there. Uh, a few other things you can do with this, uh, uh, with this, the word add-in is adding calculations. So let's say you wanted to calculate uh, numerical values. I don't have any num number, va number values in this interview, but you could add that in here. Um, and you could do, you know, multiplications, adding. That's a, lo a lot of times that's useful, particularly in the in the situation with like um, fee waivers. If you're if you're collecting a bunch of income information and then a bunch of expenses information, and you want to subtract those, subtract one from the other, you could set up a calculation inside of your document that does that. Um, and then finally, I want to show you guys lists and tables. So this is that um, function that I was showing you before. So you can do um, lists or tables of to the children where you'd actually have the, the children actually populate uh, based on how many, however many children that you had added. So I would just insert that field and it would enter it right there. So that is the word add-in. Um, I can answer any more questions about that if, if, to go into more complexity there. But I just wanted to show you a few more features on the uh, document interface before, um, before I, I turn it over to the next presenter. Um, we, so you've now set up your, your interview and you've created all your questions. Now you set up all your documents. You've loaded them in, into Document. And there's a few other things you can do. So you can set up conditional document outputs. So let's say I wanted, you know, I have like a fee waiver that is only given to certain users. I could set up conditions here where those documents would only be issued in certain cases. So for example, I could say it first shows me my default output documents, which is just all of my output documents, and I can re remove those if I want to. And then I can say maybe if, you know, let's say if marital status is married, then I want to output only this document. Um, so you can add additional conditions there. And then finally, is um, this feature where you can send finalized, send your finalized documents to a particular email address. So this is particularly useful if you want to, you know, keep your your information, uh, your documents within. You know, you don't want your end users to actually see your documents. I could say I want to send my finalized documents to this email address. I don't want to display them to the to the interview taker, or I can just display them to the interview taker. So that's also all possible. Um, and then once you've done that, you've had your interview set up, you have your output document set up, then you would actually go ahead and run this interview, which I won't actually run through the whole interview, but 
as you can see, you know, you can fill out all those fields. We have these conditions um, that we had set up in our in our uh, workflow and the no-code interface that are now populated here as well. So I won't I won't go through that because I know we're running short on time. Um, but um, that is the basic kind of all of the all the basic features of Document, and, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has um, as we go forward. Great, thanks so much. Uh, let me make Scott Kelly the presenter now. Scott Kelly is uh, from Community Lawyer. Hi, uh, my name is Scott Kelly. I'm president of Community Lawyer, um, and uh, we are an organization that works with dozens of bar associations across the country, some statewide legal aid organizations, um, and we provide tools to um, help uh, you know lawyers uh, more efficiently. Um, and affordably deliver their services. Um, so what I'm going to be taking you through today is our app builder, which is um, built on, of course, Doc Assemble, um, and is also a no-code solution. Um, and what I wanted to focus on was, uh, you know, some of this is going to be reviewing what you've, functionality you've seen already, um, but I'm going to take you through, um, you know, what a demo uh, Doc automation would look like, what a demo intake would look like, um, you know, to show the basic functionality of the app builder. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can take the apps you build or the apps others uh, build and, and share them with, with other legal aid practitioners across the country so we can really foster um, a community based around DocAssemble um, where, uh, you know, the work of, of one person in one state can be um, supporting the work of another person in another state. So. Um, just diving straight in, um, this is our app builder. You can sign up. Um, it's completely free to get started. Um, any apps you uh, make available publicly are completely free. We host them um, for you. And you can download the code at any time and run it on your own DocAssemble server. Um, we also um, allow you to kind of um, have your own DocAssemble server that can be linked um, to your account if you want to have kind of like a dedicated domain. So those are all different options. Um, but the simplest thing is just to sign up and get started. So um, when I hit uh, start new app, I can actually go in and this is going to look very familiar again to those of you um, that are used to like form builders. You can go ahead and just build out, you know, uh, an interview really rapidly in DocAssemble. You know, yes, no questions. You can ask a question here. You can define the, um, hold on, you can define variables, uh, you know, uh, let's say, um, welcome and uh, you know name and uh, do you have children it's very easy to kind of do this to format it you can add in you know formatting with the click of the button um, and you can add as many questions as you want and also associate sort of complex logic with that um, I just want to show you what it actually looks like to kind of build there's lots of different blocks you can insert signature blocks info blocks final blocks um, repeated questions um, so there's a lot of options there, and I definitely encourage you to look at our documentation and look at, um, you know, our, our videos, which we have a pretty extensive library of. Um, I'm going to back out of this and actually show you what a more um, built-out app looks like, so I can just demonstrate some of the functionality. Um, now, uh, I'm going to start with intake, and um, basically you can uh, build out an intake with all sorts of different questions. Um, different kinds of logic. So, for example, here we're asking, what is your legal issue? If someone says other, um, we're going to want to show display this question. And so you can actually define that logic over here dynamically. Um, if someone types too much in here to describe their issue, you could even like add in some logic about how many characters, um, you know, they, they should be allowed to uh, type before you give them an alert letting them know that, you know, they, they, they've typed too much and, and shouldn't be providing them that much information. Um, you can all, here's uh, going down, you can also um, determine um, the display of different uh, web pages based on answers in previous pages. So right here, if someone marks, uh, checks the checkbox for a criminal, um, they're going to be showed this, uh, this page right here, which says, sorry, we can't help you. Um, if they indicate that they have children, they're going to be asked this repeated question, much like um, Dorna, uh, you know, demoed in, in her demo. Um, you can ask repeated questions um, and then output that into documents or into emails or, or whatever kind of output you want. Um, I know one of 
one of you had mentioned, um, can I, you know, send this via a webhook um, into my case management system or into Google Sheets or into Zapier? Uh, the answer with DocSymbol and, and with Community Lawyer built on it is, is an emphatic yes. Um, and then this last thing I want to show you is you can also use um, different questions to perform calculations. So right here, we've got a simple household income, household size. We've got an eligibility calculation down here. Um, you'll notice that uh, we do a lot of things to sort of help you out and make sure that as you're building, um, your, your interviews don't break. So if I change um, this, the name of this variable, uh, eligibility calculation, to just um, eligibility formula. Let's say I just don't like the name. Notice how it dynamically updated down here. So you don't have to worry about going through the rest of your interview and updating things. We also don't present you with, for example, um, operators uh, in an expression like this that don't match the kind of expression you're working with. So right here, you're performing a calculation with numbers. You don't want to see options here that are like, is alphabetically before or is alphabetically after. You just want to see plus, minus, divide, um, multiply by. So that's, we're doing a lot of work in the background to make sure that as you're building, um, your apps um, sort of seamlessly update and um, aren't breaking. Um, so yeah, we can perform this little eligibility calculation based on your household size income uh, and income and then show you, you know, whether you're eligible or not. So I'm going to go ahead and actually run through this. Uh, this is my first time using GoToWebinar. We're down to about um, 11 minutes and we've got several questions here. So two more minutes of demo, then we really need to hit the question. Okay. Um, yeah, so then I'll go through this really quickly. So here's my name. If I do criminal, like I said, uh, I'm going to get screened out. So uh, I get an answer here. Hold on. I'm going to get screened out. Sorry. Uh, if I do other and I type too much, I'm going to get a notification. So you can really build in complex logic um, and uh, have pretty robust um, intakes. Uh, I'm going to do child name, child age, and then I'm going to move on. That's a very old child. <laughs> Sorry if I'm moving a little fast because I do want to get to the other app very quickly. Um, and then uh, household size, household income. If my household income is quite great and my household size is low, I'm not eligible. Um, but if it's, you know, I'm, I don't make very much, I have a large family, um, I'm going to see that I'm eligible. So you can build this out. Uh, it's fully customizable. I definitely uh, encourage you to take a look at the settings tab where you can change the styles of your interviews and everything like that. Um, I also want to show you the document automation side of things. Um, if you could give me a moment. So you can upload your own templates. So here's a PDF template that I've uploaded. Um, and you can actually draw fields directly on that PDF and fill in the, the, doc, the um, responses that are being um, filled in by your interview. Um, if I go forward, you can see down here that I'm filling my last name, first name, middle name, um, I'm doing some checkboxes right here, which you can insert if you want. And we dynamically only show you checkbox variables. Again, we're doing a lot of work in the background. Um, you can, we also allow you to upload Word documents or create work, Word documents from scratch. This one's created from scratch. Um, just like with a doc assemble proper, you can add, you know, all sorts of logic on different variables. So I'm only going to show this variable if this is true. Otherwise, I have this default variable that gets filled in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just run through this very, very quickly. Um, and yeah, uh, actually you get the idea. If you run through it, you're going to assemble some nice documents at the end. I can share these, um, these uh, you know, links to these apps afterwards um, and you can check them out. One last thing, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm just trying to move fast, is we also have a feature where when you build your apps, you can actually publish them to communities um, where you, they can be private communities that are member only, or they can be um, public communities where members of the public can go and, and use those apps. Um, so for example, I've set up a, um, so you go over to activation, you go over to communities, and I've set up a uh, private um, community that I'll show you right here. Uh, here we go. It's called um, ADJ. And you can actually go here and see apps that have been published by others. Um, so, for example, this app right here is based on an app that we created for New Mexico Legal Aid. It's a very extensive um, legal aid intake app. Um, you can learn more about it. Um, I'm going to share the link to this community so you can sign up to it. Um, it's a very extensive um, sort of model intake, and you can use it 
you can duplicate it, you can modify it, and I encourage other people to join this community and actually go ahead and you know publish their own apps as a resource for other members of the DocAssemble community. So um, you can go through this app on your own, but I just want to show you um, that that was available, and I'm going to drop the link that you can use to actually sign up um, for that community, and you can create your own if you want to um, it, right after I get done presenting. Um, I know I'm out of time, so I guess I'll, I'll stop. Uh, I just wanted to clarify because you're going through that pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, are you saying that to make PDF templates mm -hmm. that we don't have to buy Adobe Acrobat to make the forms that, that we can is... use Community Lawyer? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. So, yep, all you have to do is go ahead and you can, you know, get started building an app. You can upload your PDFs. I'm going to go ahead and upload my PDF. If your PDF has drawn targets on it already, it's going to recognize those drawn targets. You can add your own um, drawn targets at any time. Um, hold on, there we go. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can use uh, you know our tool to kind of end-to-end -end create document automations without ever having to use Adobe to set up your documents in the first place. And um, can so you put a signature image into a PDF template? Absolutely. Let's do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a signature block. We're just going to call it signature. And I'm going to have a template right here that I've just uploaded. I'm going to add a signature field right here. I'm going. It recognizes that, you know, signature should be here. Let's do today's date. That's a background variable that we have just to make things easier for you. And really quickly, let's just go ahead and um, the end. Uh, let's go ahead and run this um, app so you can see this work end to end. So I'm going to hit uh, final block. I'm going to go ahead and attach the document. You can also send this document by email. You can have it con uh, conditionally attached if you want to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead up here, signature. Go ahead and run this. Give it a second and here we go. Let's sign right here. Let's hit continue and the document will be assembled um, below, I go ahead and hit my rent overcharge. When you're running it in test mode, we're going to have these watermarks on the document, but if you're running it live, it's not going to be there. There's our signature right here. There's the date right there. Um, you can't really see it, but uh, you get the idea. All right, cool. Um, so I, I think we had a couple questions in the uh, chat. Uh, so the first one that we've got here is over um, Document. You mentioned um, the uh, nonprofit model. What is the cost or licensing with regards to a for-profit firm? Yeah, so um, nonprofits can be on our platform for free. The only thing is if you want to set it up on your own domain um, and, we, and we're setting up a, a new provision server for you on AWS, then we just pass on the cost that we incur from AWS, and usually that's around $25 a month. Okay, and what's the for-profit licensing cost? Uh, the for-profit licensing cost is, uh, it depends on the tier you're on. It's actually on our, all on our website. We're very transparent about it. But the lowest tier is $99 a month for two users. Second tier is $199 for five users. Um, and so then it kind of goes up from the there. The number of authors or the number of people doing assemblies? Number of authors. Okay, and is it unlimited assemblies? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, Yeah, there, there were some questions that were kind of like um, con comparing the last two options, but I'm not sure how to put those best into words. Um, uh, yeah. Well, so if anyone has any, any questions afterwards about kind of specific functionality, um, I'm sure me and Scott are probably both willing to answer those those questions. Um, if you guys want to reach me, I'm at Dorna, D-O-R-N-A, at document.org. So if you ever have any questions, um, you can email me. I'll, we, have, we have links to our videos and some of our materials on our, on our website under the Learn More tab as well. Excellent. Um, we can definitely try to get those links into a, a summary about this also up on the uh, website. Um, I think that covers most of our 
our major questions. Uh, we definitely had somebody who asked about um, kind of editing on the platforms um, EDF or PDFs um, once once they are up or whether you really need to use an external um, editor to do that. And I think the answer to that would be platform specific. What, what capabilities, if somebody's got a PDF form that they want to put up, add in the variables, um, does that need to be done externally um, on Document or is that something you can do after you've uploaded it? Does that make sense? Did you get that, Dorna? Sorry, sorry. What, what was the question? You broke up a little bit. I, I didn't know. So once a PDF, once they have a PDF that they wish to automate, um, mm -hmm. what options are there once it's been uploaded to edit or change it within your platform, or is that all done externally? Oh, got it. So uh, that's so when, when you load it to our system, it changes the, the field names so that they match whatever is written next to them. But otherwise, we you can't edit the actual document, the PDF itself. So you do need to do that externally. Once you generate though the doc, the document though, just like you can in DocAssemble, you can edit that document. Like let's say you put the client's name Jane Doe and you wanted it to be Jane L Doe, you can do that at the end. Um, so excellent. There's a question about um, sharing this webinar. Um, it should be posted hopefully within a week to our YouTube channel. Um, it'll be publicly available. Anybody can watch it. Please go ahead and share it. Okay. Um, as we've got about two more minutes here, um, one last, uh, could we go through each speaker and the best ways to contact them um, just so that people can follow up? All right, this is Jonathan Pyle. The best way to reach me is to join the DocAssemble Slack and uh, post a message either privately or in the questions channel. Okay, and you are an organizer for the event, Jonathan. If you could type the Slack address into the chat and send it to the entire audience, we'll try to get some people on there. Sure thing. This is Quentin. A good way to reach me is um, either Q Stainhouse at, well, actually at Q Stainhouse on Twitter is a good way, or lemmalegal.com. Okay. I'll put that on the chat if I can. And this is Dorna. Are you, the best way probably to reach me is by email at Dorna at document.org and also on Twitter at, at Dorna Moini um, or, or at Take Document Law. We also have a live chat on our website, so if you're ever on document.org and have any questions, you can always type in, a, type in the chat box and we're really responsive there. Okay, Scott, you have been unmuted. Hi there. Yeah, this is Scott. Um, you can email me at scott at community.lawyer. Um, you can reach out to us. There's a little chat widget on our website at any time, and usually myself or Toma or one of the team members will get back to you very shortly. Um, we also have a link on our website where you can sign up to have just one-on-one -on -one conversations with us. Um, we love uh, the work that legal aid organizations are doing and want to support that, and we're free to use and here to help. So let us know. Okay. And we've got one last question here. This is um, uh, for Jonathan. Um, are there any major features for DocAssemble um, that are not yet implemented, but that you're definitely um, looking at or considering? Um, I tend to implement them very quickly, so I don't have a lot lined up. Uh, I'm, the thing I was working on this morning was ensuring that you can run two different interviews at the same time in the same browser. So that's coming. Excellent. So in other words, if we've got a feature we really like, we just have to convince you it's interesting and it may show up in 24 hours? Sometimes longer, but yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you all so much. Um, this has been a really informative. This platform has matured so much um, in the last few years. There's so much more integration and community support. The Slack channel, it sounds like there's about 500 people who are part of that um, working on these. And I look forward to seeing where this goes over the next few years. Um, I also know that a few of the people who are here will be at the um, 
Innovations in Technology Conference in Portland in January. Um, I'll definitely be there, and I look forward to chatting with some people. Hopefully, there is a hackathon held before the event in which we may be able to play with this tool and come up with some other awesome stuff to help the community. Thank you all for coming out today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for organizing this.